I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's webcast. It's the 13th of April, and you know, spring is moving on. I'm praying that we won't have a lot of tornadoes this season. Uh, I don't like tornadoes, <laughs> but you know what? If our government doesn't straighten up and start uh, being a little kinder to Israel, we're liable to have a bunch of them. Well, let's see. There was Assad who said this week that it's either peace or war. I mean, he's rattling his sabers up there in Damascus. Can you imagine Israel having to fight D Syria? I don't know what kind of war they could mount. I don't know what their time schedule is or what the logistics look like up in the north. But uh, Israel is definitely on alert. By the way, back during the 1973 war, um, you remember Golda Meir was the prime minister of Israel. And uh, this was written up in a book. I um, can't remember the name of the book, but it was a bestseller back then. Uh, she uh, tried to get Henry Kissinger uh, to get the president to help Israel, and uh, he him hawed around and didn't want to help her. And uh, it was really quite an affair until finally one day she said, look at the satellite up in the Golan. Israel had rolled out all of its nukes. It's, it's missiles. And they were all pointed at all the Arab capitals in the Middle East. And when Kissinger saw that, <laughs> he was so frightened, he immediately begged her, please put those away, we'll help you, we'll help you. <laughs> and then, of course, Mr. Kissinger, as you recall, became the great uh, mediator to, to put a stop to the fighting. The fighting went on for two weeks. Israel lost 3,000 of its finest soldiers, but they came just this close to the Samson option. In fact, I think that's the name of the book. And the Samson option meant that if Israel had to, they had pushed the button and nuked the capital of every single Arab nation. Well, that's entirely possible if Israel is backed up against the wall for Israel to do that again. So you be praying for Israel. Somehow, when the battle of Gog and Magog comes, I know that something similar to that will probably take place. Well, here's an email. Hi, Brother Church. I'm email emailing to let you know that I'm praying along with others around the world for your complete healing and recovery from the cancer you have. I'm committed to pray each day at 1115 a.m. So, we'll mark you down at uh, that time on our daily planner. And others of you, if you can pick a particular time, let us know. We'll put you down. I would like to fill it up. I mean, all, um, every 15 minutes throughout the entire 24-hour period so that people can be praying for me constantly. Paul taught us pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And I'm convinced that that is exactly what we need for my liver. She says, I'm committed to pray each day at 11.15. We'll continue to do so until the news has come of your healing. Sir, we love you and do not miss a weekly or daily broadcast. Shirley from Hobbs, New Mexico. Here's one from Paul from Columbus, Ohio. Hi, JR. I'm glad there's so many around the world praying for you. After all, as much as you have given to all of us, we all need to give back to you as our brother in Christ. Hopefully God will reach down and touch your liver with his healing and spirit of greatness. And I'm sure many others will be praying and keep strong faith that you will be healed in the name above all names, Jesus the Christ. He healed me of a bad addiction of alcohol and a very bad period of total depression. You're a great man of God. And I am very grateful to have learned all that you've taught me. Take care now, and God bless you. Keep your faith high. Thanks, Paul. Here's another one. This is from Enka in Romania, Eastern Europe. Hello, JR. I'm watching your show on the Internet. I'm praying for you, and I know God will bring health in your liver. Your show is amazing. You and Gary are doing a great job. I learned many wonderful things about the Bible and about daily prophetic news. God bless you and keep you safe. Thank you from Romania. I appreciate that. And then Tom Horn, you know, the 
uh, gentleman whose books we're offering, Apollyon Rising 2012, and he's been here for an interview. Well, he emailed me this morning and said, J.R., just want you to know that all of us have been praying for you for your healing each day, and we'll continue to hold you up before the Lord. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. And here's another. Uh, hi, J.R., I don't pray for you just once a day. I pray many times a day. Praise the Lord. She says, I don't want the Lord to take you from us. You have opened our eyes to things in the Bible that no one else saw. I live in Memphis and have thought of taking a drive to OK or Oklahoma just to meet you. Have you tried Essiac tea? Yes, I have tried Essiac tea. And um, I've tried, oh, so many things. But I appreciate the, uh, the uh, suggestion there, and I'll look back into it again. Uh, why not? <laughs> it wouldn't hurt. Here's another one. My name is Ted. I live in Wasilla, Alaska. My wife and I pray daily for you, J.R. We'll not give up. We want a complete healing for you. We believe, J.R., that you will be going in the rapture with us. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for all the work that you and Gary have done, and so many of us and who's teaching on prophecy. God bless you and keep your ministry going until we're taken home. Love and peace in Christ Jesus our Lord, Ted and Lois. Thanks, Ted. God bless you. And I appreciate that. Not, not only have we received mail, emails, hundreds of them, but these are just a sampling I, that I pulled just, just to read for today's broadcast. Dear Mr. Church, I will pray for your health and your ministry. I pray that you will be around until the rapture will come and we all who love Jesus will finally see what we are believing. I also pray that your life will be extended and stretched and your years added additionally if necessary until the rapture comes and you and the other believers will be celebrating life eternity. Lots of love from Doris, Frankfurt, near Frankfurt, Germany. Hey, how about that? Thank you and your team for the excellent work you're doing. Ah, oh my, the, in, the internet, the worldwide internet, isn't it amazing? I just praise the Lord every day that we've been able to be on the internet. Here's one. My oldest son wanted me to be sure to email you right away and let you know that we're praying for you. We just caught up on last week's programs this evening to discover your announcement about the cancer returning. My husband, myself, my, our two oldest sons prayed for you immediately following the program's conclusion. In him, Arthur and Kathleen. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. And for the rest of you, I want you to know that if you'll just pause as soon as this program, as soon as I say so long, then I want you to just take this opportunity to spend a few minutes in prayer and asking the Lord to touch my liver, okay? Um, I opted not to take the chemo. I just did not want the torture. And so we're trying other methods. We are uh, eating right, no meat. We're eating greens, lots of greens, and uh, trying to get protein uh, best way we can other than meats. And uh, by the way, it's, it's helping. We, we're feeling a little better every day. And um, I'm going to be starting some IV injections in the morning um, called poly MVA, I think it is. But uh, we'll let you know how that, hap how that works out. Uh, it's, it sounds promising. So you keep praying for me. We're trusting in Jesus. And the way things are moving in the Middle East, boy, <laughs> it may not be long before we're out of here. I pray that's the case. Let's pray together. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. I'm J.R. Church. We'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.